Okay, guys. Sorry the internet connection's so bad. Um, it's kind of weird because it started off really good, but maybe it's because it's summer in Montana or because it's winter in New Zealand. I have no idea. So let me just walk you through what I would say if we were live together. So you started off this investigation a few weeks ago using cabbage juice and then you took a little bit of the cabbage juice and you put it in a whole bunch of different solutions. You had everything from window cleaner to vinegar to tea, coffee, water, maybe some baking soda and water. And then you saw that depending upon the solution that you were testing using the cabbage juice, they turned various colors. You had everything um, from red, to what all the way up to yellow okay so um, then I asked if you could begin to group those solutions that had similar colors so if you took a look that grouping may have had lemon juice pink was sort of kind of close to maybe the dark pink with tea for example and you would say, okay, I'm going to group all these ones that are sort of in the pink reddish color. And then I'm going to group all the ones that are in sort of the blue aqua green. And then I might have an outlier that's the yellow. Okay, so you started to think your way through that. Then I had you take those exact same solutions. So you had the same tea, coffee, water, baking soda and water, cleaning solution, vinegar, etc., etc. And then you use litmus paper to test each one of those solutions. And you found that the red paper, paper either stayed red or the red paper turned blue. The blue paper either stayed blue or the blue paper turned red. Those are the only choices that you would get. And so again, you started to group and you said, okay, I've got all of these solutions over here that turn red with litmus paper. I've got all of these solutions over here that turn blue with litmus paper. Now, both the cabbage juice and the litmus paper are what we call indicators. They are indicating that there's something going on with each of those solutions. And I know you've already started to talk about it because I've heard you as we've been online, but you're beginning to talk about this idea of acids and bases. So let's drill down a little bit in terms of what do we mean by an acid, what makes an acid an acid, and what makes a base a base. So in order to do that, I need to remind you of the periodic table. The, there's only two elements on this table that we're interested in when we talk about acids and bases. pH is a number that we give to acids and bases. pH stands for potential of hydrogen. You'll notice that the H in pH is capitalized. The reason it's capitalized is because the, it is the element hydrogen, which is number one on the periodic table. So if a solution has a whole bunch of extra hydrogen in it, that always carries a plus charge to it. Because it has a plus charge, we call that a special type of hydrogen atom. It's called an ion, A-O-N. And we indicate it with H+. Plus. That means it has a little extra plus charge to it. Probably what that means is the electron that's in the nucleus of the atom has been taken away, which leaves the resulting atom with a positive proton charge. So the more H plus ions you have in a solution, the greater the amount of hydrogen is what we call a stronger acid, all the way down to a zero. I'll get to that more in a minute. I mentioned that there's another element that we're interested in now, and that is oxygen. So a hydrogen and an oxygen atom come together to form what we call hydroxide, and that's H-Y-D-R-O-X-I-D-E. When that happens, the resulting atom has a negative charge to it. Let's step back for a minute. We're all familiar with H2O. This is deeper chemistry that hopefully you'll get at some point. 
but there's no pluses or minuses on the H2O when we write it out. The reason for that is the number of protons and the number of electrons are actually balanced. We have an equal number of each, so the resulting water molecule does not have a charge. But when you put an O and an H together, it does have an extra electron, <clears throat> so it has a negative charge to it. And again, the more OH or hydroxide ions you have in a solution, the more basic it will be, the more on the base side it will be. So here we go. Um, look at the upper left hand corner. We have this period or this pH chart with neutral in the middle. We have acids at one end of the chart. In this case, it's at the top, and the bases are at the bottom. And then we put numbers to those. Somebody just invented this in the past. Had it been invented by you guys, you could have put whatever numbers there you wanted. But when the folks who created this and invented it put numbers to it, they put 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 14. They said that 7 is neutral. That means it has an equal number of OH minus ions and H plus ions in it. So it doesn't have a charge at all. So it's neutral. And then the more H plus ions you have, you're going to have, be more acidic. If the more OH minus atoms or yeah, atoms you have, the more basic you are going to be. And that's what that bottom right hand chart shows us. <clears throat> okay. Then we begin to see that household familiar items all can be ranked by their pH. On the left-hand side of this chart, we have the acids. Everything from your stomach acid, which can be all the way down to a 1, to oven cleaner on the far right-hand side, which can have a pH of 13. The, because we know that these numbers are determined by how many of these H plus or OH minus atoms or ions are in them, we quickly discover that the number one to a number two is not a linear jump. In other words, it's not just adding one and one. It's actually an exponential jump. That means that there's actually, if we start with seven and go backwards or go to six, that means there's generally a hundred times more atoms in a pH of six of the H plus ions. Sorry, let's start over. Sorry, I'm getting confusing here. But start with the seven. It has, you know, basically no H plus ions in it. If you go to a six, it has a hundred times more H plus ions in it. And then if you go to a five, that would be another hundred times. So that would be a thousand times what a seven would be. And you can kind of see how that jumps around. Those aren't exact numbers, but the idea is that it's not a linear progression. You're just not adding one and one when you go from a one to a two. You actually are jumping exponentially. Okay, so just keep that in mind that there's lots and lots and lots more of those ions depending upon where you're moving on the chart, either more or less. So what are some characteristics of acids and bases? This is a Venn diagram, and what would be really cool is to have you do this on your own, but since it's here, I'll share that with you. On the left-hand side, we can see that pHs are rated as less than 7. They have a sour taste. Think of lemonade, lime juice, things like that, sour taste. They produce the H plus ion. It turns blue litmus paper red. It reacts with active metals to form a hydrogen gas. And again, the reason it does that is because that hydrogen ion is in there. On the far right hand side, we have the bases. Those pHs are greater than seven. If you were to taste it, it tastes bitter. It produces the OH minus ion. It turns red litmus paper blue. It feels slippery. You ever have a chance to pick up or you know put some Windex or some window cleaner on your fingers, it feels slippery. And they're also called alkalines. And then what they share is that obviously they're changing the color of acid base indicators. Remember all the way back when I started a little bit ago, I said that cabbage juice is an indicator, pH paper is an indicator, and there are other chemicals that are also indicators. They react with each other. And when they do that, you may have discovered if you had some vinegar and some baking soda and water and you put the two of those together, it's going to do the fizzy bubbly thing. Okay. 
when they do that, if they totally neutralize all the way out, in other words, if you have a balance of H plus ions and OH minus ions, when you mix an acid and a base, they will form water. That's the byproduct of that. And they also form a salt. And it's not necessarily table salt. There's all kinds of salts out there. And the other thing that they share in common is they are electrolytes. That means they're able to take charges and you know give charges away. So those are just some um, basics about what you have been learning. Had I been able to talk to you, I would have asked you some questions along the way, but there we go. For your final activity, what I'm going to have you do is um, you're going to take a, an antacid tablet. So this, I just ripped this one apart, but you know, some sort of an antacid tablet and just put it in water. And so um, many of you know about antacids, maybe your parents take them. I don't know what brand name you have in New Zealand. In the United States, we have one called Tums, but whatever you guys use. But you'll notice that it's reacting with the water because um, it's probably, it's, you know, the carbonation piece is actually what's reacting. Now, if I were to put a piece of litmus paper in here, and I will do that, um, what color do you predict it will turn? I've got some blue paper. I'm getting a piece out right now, and I've got some red paper, so while I'm buying some time as I'm getting my papers out. You can either pause the video or you can just say right now, you can turn to your neighbor and say, what color do you think this is going to turn? Okay, it's an antacid, it's um, you know, that sort of thing. And actually, that's a big hint right there. All right, so I have red paper. I'll dip it in here and you notice that it turned beep. Not a very, it's hard for me to see right now. Okay, kind of bluish, all right. And my blue paper, dip that in there and basically stayed blue, okay? So we know that this is a base. Well, we can even find out how strong a base it is. And since we drink this, it's probably not gonna be a really strong base because uh, really, really strong acids or really strong bases will hurt you. They are, in many cases, poisonous. So you have to be careful um, how you handle those. But I've got a pH paper here. I'm gonna dip it in there, kind of with that color. And it sort of looks to me like it's kind of around the uh, maybe eight, nine-ish range, okay? So what I'm going to do, and this is the investigation that you guys would do as well. I don't know where my chem tray went. Um, I don't see one, but I've got an extra cup right here. All right. So I'm going to take my dropper, and I'm going to drop out a... I'm going to count how many drops I've got of that baking soda. I'm sorry, that antacid. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I would do like maybe 50 drops. So you count them out there. You do need to know exactly how many drops you start with. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to get some vinegar and I would suggest you dilute the vinegar. Actually, you can try it all kinds of ways. You can go with straight up vinegar, you know, or you can cut it half and half. In other words, half water, half vinegar, or three quarters vinegar, one quarter water. But keep a record of what you are doing in terms of either not diluting the vinegar at all or diluting the vinegar. What's really cool is you can do it several different times. So then I've got my... Um, antacid solution in my cup and I know I've counted out 50 drops and then I'm going to get my vinegar and then I'm going to do like maybe five drops at a time. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five and I'm going to swish this around because I know now that the antacid is a base, we know that the vinegar is an acid and what we're trying to do is to see if we can find the exact neutral spot of this new solution when I put both of those others together. So one of the ways to do that is I can then take a piece of red litmus paper and I can dip it in here and if it stays red then I know it's gone too far because it's an acid but this still looks blue and so I know that I would need to add more vinegar to it. Do five drops at a time. Five more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Mix it up a little bit. Just make sure it's, you know, mixed around and they're good. And then test it again, again with the litmus paper. So how will I know that this has reached neutral? Well, 
the blue paper will stay blue and the red paper will stay red. And once I think I've reached that point, then and only then, yeah, Mr. Pateman can give you a piece of litmus paper and you can test it and what number do you want to prove that it's neutral? Bingo, seven. So you're going to do that. And again, you'll get different numbers of drops depending upon how strong or weak your acid is, okay? So um, then you can do some really kind of fun math if you want. You can figure out, okay, so my ratio was 50 drops of the antacid, but it took me only 25 drops of the vinegar. So which one was stronger? You can ask your questions, things like that, okay? So there you go. Um, I think that's all I have, but let me do this before I'm, I'm done. So where, why do we need to study about acids and bases? Well, think about swimming pools. Think about food that you eat. Think about the shampoo that you use. All of those may have more acid or make more base in them. The foods that you eat, you basically, no pun intended, you want them to be around seven, but some foods just happen to be more acidic or more basic. You, again, for, um, if you have an aquarium at home, you have fish in it, you want to make sure that the pH of the water is what that fish species needs. Plants need a particular pH of the water that is used to, you know, provide them their water source. However, the same thing's true with the soil. Soil actually has pH. So you can test water pH, you can test soil pH, all of those different things can be tested. And when you, sometimes when you go to the doctor, they will actually pull, um, they'll draw some blood out and they will test the pH of your blood. So you can go ahead and take a look at what the pH of your blood is. If you haven't done this already, stick a piece of pH paper in your mouth and see what your saliva is today. Is it more acidic? Is it more basic? So um, the only, yeah, I think that's it. So I think that's enough. If you guys have any questions, just feel free to message me, but I uh, hope you've enjoyed this and I will hopefully see you guys at some point in the future. Take care. Bye now.